That's me. Up rope. That's, that's me. Climbing. Try to climb in balance. Stand well out from the rock. Don't make desperate rush moves. Plan the route well ahead of you. These instructions from the course leader to this group of British Columbia school teachers learning to climb for the very first time. Strathcona Park Lodge Outdoor Education Center is located 30 miles west of Campbell River in the middle of Vancouver Island. Uh, you're right in the right place. Yeah. There's one point there where you have to reach a little bit higher to get a hole, but you're pretty well there. Okay. By developing skills and tastes for the outdoors, you can live on the edge, as we call it. Could you go over to the left, too, if you wanted to, or is it best to go right at the side, wherever she's going? It's best to go that way, because the rock's clean. You go this way or the other way? No, straight up. Make sure to have your hand in football before you move on. Keep three points of contact at all times. on the edge is walking the mountain ridges or canoeing the rivers or walking the seashore and that's what we at Strathcona call a total immersion experience. It's always been um, a special focus of energy to come to this place and the place fills me. It's like going to the Alpine. I'm, I've done a lot of mountaineering in the park now and going to the Alpine fills me so much I can't speak. Eventually they do something and then they get to a beautiful spot. Maybe they've been in a slightly dangerous situation and all of a sudden their body just becomes uh, a part of their mind and they start seeing different relationships in their brain. Their mental map changes. Everybody feels really, really good because they realize that together they're strong but individually they're just one little speck and nature's all around them and they're nothing. They come here with their makeup and their fancy clothes and so on and, and after a couple of days, everybody sort of got the same physical trappings about them. The only thing that really shows is kind of their own inner self or their soul or how much they put out for the group. And uh, they feel really comfortable and good about this. We do a lot of climbing in Strathcona Park on Vancouver Island's highest peaks. Also, the lodge is nearby. That one there, the, the, um, the one with the kind of four towers on it, that's Elkhorn, that's where we, we went with the last group at the end of the last course, the last um, wilderness leadership course. course. We had three days there. We, we did we do any good sitting like we did here? Oh, about, about, two, about two miles of it continuously, oh, straight down. It's beautiful. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Had to be careful of the crevasses, though. We, we had to be roped together, glissading, for about the first uh, first half mile. And this. How many people would you rope together in a line? I think four. four. I really think four, because what you're trying to do is to stop the... Um, the guy, the guy who goes in a crevasse would be able to stop him so before, he hit, before he hits the bottom or goes down too far. Um, some groups I hear are, are taking parts of two on, on, the, on glaciers now, which uh, uh, maybe a bigger party were just in groups of two, which seems peculiar to me. We, made a, we put a base camp in there and then we, we went down across the... Van on a real mountain, <laughs> to use the word, and it was very frightening for a while. 
but it's very exciting and you really feel like you've achieved something when you get there. When you, after having climbed that mountain, there are other things I'll certainly try now that I would never have tried before. I didn't believe what I could do when I had to do it. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoyed it. Uh, mountain's kind of strange. It really scares you sometimes, but you get over it, I think. It makes you feel a lot better for it. It was uh, my first peak, and uh, to get up on top of something and look around on all sides and just see how, how big things really are was, was uh, a real highlight for me. Jim Bolding, director of Strathcona. We felt a, a strong need for uh, the rural experience for our students, or the outdoor experience, teaching in the uh, conventional system. Partly because of the way people treat people, and partly because of the way man has treated the environment. White man has almost devastated this land of BC and is short tenure of relationship with, with it in the last 70 years and there seems to be a need for man to re-establish a relationship with nature and when he does it seems to bring on very very beautiful feelings and it improves the way people treat people and we particularly have noticed this with the 10,000 people we've had through the outdoor education center and uh, practically uh, 800 teachers. Okay. Okay. Well, just don't break something. Don't destroy it. Just like there's going to be different things that you find here than what you find at home. Like where do you live? West Van. West Van. You've got pine cones and things there too. Yeah. Lots of water and logs. But are there things different around here? Would you find different things in here? Okay, well, think about those things when you're modeling. I bet you anything it'll come out in the clay. The things that you make here will be different from anything that you may make at home. Where did Raku um, first start? Raku pottery? That's, it's, it's a primitive pottery that started in Japan. It was brought to Japan by the uh, Koreans. It means joy and happiness. And that's why you're doing it, because it's fun. You should get a certain good sensation of working things with your hand and making things. You feel that way? Yeah. Okay, well, you feel good just sitting here on the sun day? Yeah. Everybody can move back to the countryside. But that longingness for a wilderness land and uh, nature is a primeval thing in man. We look upon ourselves as a a uh, interface between urban man and nature. And there's a need, in particularly in Canada and the world, to understand the value of the rural experience. Society sweeps itself along towards destruction of our water systems, our ecosystems of all types, the vanishing species of animals and birds and things like that. Man cannot live without those things, and he must know that those things are out there, even though it's only during a very small part of the year that he's able to go out and look at them. And therefore, man has to have somebody looking after the countryside for him. And this is what we call the stewardship of the countryside. And places like ours have spent many days putting out forest fires, keeping track of the elk, watching the trumpeter swans, and kind of looking after the countryside. And really, this is most important for urban man to know that somebody's looking after that countryside for him. And that when he, he and his family or his children or school children come into this country, countryside, there's somebody who has the sensitivity and the background to interpret it for them so that they know how to treat the countryside. man to earn a living has had to move where the action is and the action is in the city one of the best ways to preserve that quality of life in the city 
is to develop sites like this in the countryside where people can go and rekindle that spirit of humanism. But our way of life has got to change. But this way of life is not going to be changed in concrete jungles unless man has an opportunity to have contact with nature.